the chair will call the January 5th, 2021 meeting of the city council to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the, to the flag, flag the of United the United States, States of America and, and to, the to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. all. Thank you. Clerk, if you please call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Here. Alderman Gregory. Here. Alderwoman Turner. Here. Alderman Fulgenzi. Here. Alderman Proctor. Here. Alderwoman DeCenso. Present. Alderman McMiniman. Alderwoman Connolly. Present. Alderman Donlin. Here. Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mayor Langfelder. Here. Mr. Mayor, a quorum is present. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the first meeting of 2021. Glad 2020 is over. We do have two presentations. First one's gonna be Doug Brown with regards to the uh, update on the CWLP's utility bill rebate program for businesses. And did all the uh, council members get a copy of that? emailed yeah yes so far so good So I wanted to give you guys a, 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 a just a really pretty brief update on the utilities rebate uh, program, basically for small businesses. Um, you know, Alder and Don and the mayor last week uh, requested an update, so that's why we're here. If you can go to the next slide. I do that now? Okay, I can do it. Okay, great. Um, so just a, you know, a brief overview. We developed the program guidelines to basically help smooth the review process to make it a little bit easier and then also easy for, you know, as well as for the businesses to apply for it. Uh, we, we built an online uh, presence at cdop.com forward slash rebate for that. We opened applications December 17th. Um, and uh, we actually are using our energy services office to administer the program um, just because of their expertise. So we took that $1 million um, basically from the EIRF fund and we're using that to rebate back their August and September 2020 electric bills up to $3,000 a piece. And we're targeting small businesses, uh, restaurants and bars. <clears throat> What we want, though, is some of the, the things is we want to make sure that they can demonstrate the hardship, which we're pretty sure, you know, uh, there's certain businesses that are definitely impacted. We know of this, but um, we also want to make sure that um, we're targeting small businesses. That's why we have the 100 kW limit, but that's excludes that that limit is excluded for bars and for restaurants. The <clears throat> you also have to be located in the city of Springfield. There is no limit to the number of employees for an establishment. There's been some confusion on that as well, what we've been told. Um, it, we, even though we're pretty clear in our guidelines, um, we're, we're trying to make sure we focus on that with uh, uh, the businesses out there because it doesn't matter how many employees you have. Um, that's not a requirement. Um, same thing with if you've received financial aid already from other sources, that doesn't matter either. So using our energy services office to administer this is, is good because you know they're they're the experts at the workshops, the energy audits, the my solar and re renewable choice. 
uh, responsible for many other rebates that the city does. Um, so you can contact them at 217-789-2070 directly or email them at energyexperts at cop.com. So our outreach that we've done so far, uh, you know, besides the news release, we've hit the social media very hard. Uh, the basically all of our accounts that have online accounts uh, with us, we've emailed, we've used OPEDS uh, email blast, the liquor license email blast, um, neighborhood uh, newsletter, thanks to Julia. And then uh, the Springfield Chamber of Commerce actually did an email blast as well. And uh, we've added going out to the January utility bills is basically uh, a reference to our website for all uh, our customers, residential and uh, commercial, to look at to be able to see that uh, where they need to go to uh, look for financial assistance. And then also targeted referrals as well through the commercial office. So as you can see here, we basically got some inputs that we need. Uh, we need their account numbers, you know, to apply. That's the way we can verify what kind of class customer they are. And then uh, we, we actually want to know the number of employees that they had previously and currently, because we're, we're assuming there's probably a drop because of the impact. Um, we're just asking them to input that, in, that information to us. Um, as well as the second and third quarter financial uh, re requirements for expenses and revenues from compared from last year to this year. This is just to basically show uh, a financial impact um, to make sure they're, uh, they're in need of a rebate. So what we've done um, with our website is actually we put on uh, an application help tool that, uh, that runs them through an online tutorial just as they can go along with a page by page description of how to navigate uh, each field. And then uh, of course you can call uh, the energy services office as well as email for, for any questions or concerns. Uh, um, you know, it's, we're, we're very open on the application uh, to any information that you can provide uh, for what we're requesting. So, uh, you know, more than likely your application is going to get approved. You just need to submit it. So right now, as of today, we had 91 customers um, that uh, have applied. Um, and out of that, we have about 86 right now that have been reviewed and are ready to be approved. Um, so we're very soon that those credits will be applied to their bills um, as you know, basically in the month of January. And, uh, you know, as we get more and more, we'll, we'll apply them as soon as we can, uh, as soon as they get reviewed. Director uh, Brown, just a point of order that I joined the meeting. Alderman McMenamin joined the meeting. Sorry for the interruption. Thank you. Noted. And something that we've done from the from the very start of the pandemic, basically, is uh, any all of our assist financial assistance type information that we have for our customers, we've put on our website at cop.com as well for residential and commercial. So moving on to residential um, for project relief, we we did put three hundred thousand additional funding from the EIRF fund, and that's basically going to give up to five hundred dollars per account. So that's on top of the additional existing program that was in existence. And uh, so what that means is typically uh, a customer that you know, applied for our, our, our existing program for project relief last year would not have been able to apply this year because we want to cycle in new, uh, new customers to make sure we can spread as much money around as we can. Um, but with this uh, larger volume of money that's available, we're, we're opening up to basically everybody from last year and from this year. So there is no restrictions to that. So we're hoping that we can get a lot more people, um, you know, some relief uh, with this. It is administered by Fifth Street Renaissance. Uh, they do a great job for us on the project relief program. They were able to expand that, uh, that effort for us. Um, it will take time to process uh, all the customers. They do have to do interviews um, and, and qualifications and that kind of thing. So 
But the first step for all our customers uh, is to call 217-789-2414 so they get started getting uh, pre-qualified for that. So from our existing um, applicants uh, for our, the, the program that we had launched previously to this, this uh, increase to funding, we had about 450 applicants. And so far they've helped 27 uh, that have been processed. And with this new uh, funding, They've assisted already 24 uh, customers so far with that. So, um, you know, they're, they're going to uh, work through it uh, as quick as they can, but it will take some time. So, um, I will open up that for any questions. Any questions from the council? Alderwoman Turner? I just have a quick question. Do we have a similar report for the residential program? Um, since that was basically just started, this is this is really the information that I have uh, available for that. It's uh, the second or the second to the last slide that covers the information on the residential program for yeah, project do you have relief. Any, uh, numbers associated with that yet? That, yeah, the only thing I was able to get uh, was just basically before this meeting, um, and it was the, uh, out of the existing program, the project relief, we have 450 applicants uh, so far, which they've processed 27. And with the new funds, they've uh, able to uh, process 24 so far out of that. So um, that is, uh, what, uh, 51. Uh, customers so far. So, you know, again, as we've kind of explained that there is no restrictions on who can apply. If they received uh, funding from last year, they can apply this year. So we should see additional people applying uh, for this above and beyond the 450 that's already applied. Okay. So is Fifth Street uh, Renaissance administering that program as well? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments? Thank you. Next, uh, I asked Nate Bottom to give a kind of a review again, uh, since we did have our first no fall already. Be good to get ahead of it a little bit and have him go over some uh, information associated with that. Thanks, Mayor. All right, so as you're aware, um, we brought in New Year's right with uh, some ice and snow. Um, and Public Works mission is uh, to monitor the winter conditions on a, over a 1,400 lane miles of roadway. We evaluate it uh, and then initiate the necessary treatments of the roadways to effectively and efficiently uh, improve the conditions of the roads for the traveling pu public. And then we oversee, adjust, and manage the completion of the operations to address any, any of the uh, roadway conditions. Um, we're continuously trying to improve the process. Um, we, this past year, we decided to try to optimize our snow routes, and we did that based upon the ADT, the average daily traffic, routes to critical facilities such as schools and the medical facilities. Uh, as well as the slope of the roads. Uh, we scored the roads with uh, steeper slopes higher, uh, as well as crash data due to winter conditions and the surface material on the roadway, as well as bus routes. Um, we wanted to balance our snow streets and our, our districts uh, so that we could get done plowing basically at the same time uh, with the seven districts that we have. Uh, in order to accomplish that, we had two larger planning meetings uh, with our operations coordinators, snow bosses, uh, our drivers that are out doing the plowing, uh, as well as our engineers that uh, generally make the call, uh, just to uh, get everybody's input and buy-in so that we properly um, redistribute our routes and optimize our routes. Uh, we did a dry run after the two initial planning meetings uh, just to uh, see how it worked and work out any kinks. And we followed those up with subsequent smaller working group meetings uh, that include the operations coordinators, snow bosses, uh, engineers, and uh, our GIS programs coordinator, Riley Potts, whom did the, the lion's share of this work in uh, laying this out. 
Uh, but it took a total team effort in order to get it to, to where it's at, and uh, and we think it's gonna, we're going to be able to uh, plow the snow more efficiently uh, and save save, uh, save the taxpayers' monies. Um, the types of streets that we have, we have our primary streets and trouble spots, which are the first streets that we're going to plow. Those are generally your higher uh, average daily traffic streets. Uh, basically, the majority of streets are within a quarter of a mile of uh, a primary arterial street. Um, so uh, we need to make sure that those are cleared first. And then we will move to secondary event-specific streets. We call these event-specific streets because um, we will salt these, these streets. We do salt the primary streets and the trouble spots. Uh, but our secondary streets, sometimes we'll salt them, sometimes we just need to plow them depending upon the weather. Uh, those are a lot of your um, collector streets, uh, the, the main drags through neighborhoods, or uh, some of the uh, back streets in commercial districts, generically speaking. Uh, and then our uh, final um, amount of streets are our secondary plow only streets, which tend to be in your, your lower traffic areas, your subdivisions. Uh, and we also take care of the downtown sidewalks with our crews. Uh, in regards to Resources that uh, Public Works has, uh, we have 100 um, uh, Public Works employees that participate in snow operations. That includes 47 pieces of equipment, um, including snow plows, uh, heavy equipment, and, uh, and our light trucks. Um, obviously our tandem trucks, so we have 25 of those, which are um, um, the, the red trucks that you see um, that uh, do a lot of the lion's share of the work. Um, and then uh, Lake Services also helps us. They actually plow District 5 around the lake. Uh, they have approximately 18 to 20 employees and 10 pieces of equipment they utilize. And then on larger events, so uh, when we get a lar uh, uh, three, four, five inches, and we need uh, some help from CWLP Water to help us get um, so, uh, snow out of the downtown areas, they'll lend us uh, five pieces of equipment and three to five employees. Uh, we range from uh, 3,000 to 9,000 tons of salt that we utilize every year. Uh, we have the, the East facility, which is where our garage is, our main headquarters. Uh, there at um, MLK and Clear Lake. And then uh, we have a West facility out in Prairie Crossing. We now have that covered, which, uh, which helps uh, keep the salt uh, intact in and, uh, and, and uh, gives us an extra place to store, store the salt. Uh, and, and it also helps our operations because we can get there quicker uh, when we're plowing on the southwest side of town. And that's, we adjusted our routes to account for that. And we spend anywhere from 200,000 to a million dollars a year uh, for, on snow operations depending upon the weather events. Luckily, we've had a pretty decent years. In the last five years, we've only averaged about $500,000. Uh, we start pre-planning in August, actually. We, we always joke, the hottest day of the year is when we start planning for our snow operations. We just want to make sure we're ready. Uh, and we install snow fences uh, in mid-November. These are usually areas that uh, snow will drift uh, around some of the parks, as well as uh, some of our uh, outskirt roads, such as uh, Lenhart Road, Archer Elevator Road. Um, Cockrell Lane. And then um, whenever we do anticipate snow, we do pre-treatment with brining. We've actually expanded our operations to go further up the hills too uh, with brining this year. And we, always, we continue to monitor uh, the weather events with uh, Weather Sentry, our, our app um, that helps guide us in making decisions, uh, keeps track of pavement temperatures, which uh, helps us make informed decisions. We can either to help us predict when we need to start or when we can stop uh, based upon those temperatures. Uh, we also preload our trucks, um, our trouble spots. We actually will pull them into the garage and preload them and have the plows on them just in anticipation if there is any inclement weather uh, so that we can get, get out uh, fairly quickly or, or we'll load the trucks even the night before for, for other, other trucks if we anticipate a larger event. Uh, and then we just determine the appropriate operational uh, approach as you know, no, no one storm is the same. Uh, and we utilize City Works and our AVL, our um, vehicle tracking system, uh, in order to make sure we're operating as efficiently as possible uh, when, when we are uh, plowing the snow. And then we always do a post-event evaluation too in order to um, see if we had any issues, any spots we missed to make sure that we, uh, we hit them the next time or any, any cleanup that we need to complete. Uh, it's, it's very challenging. No one event is the same. Uh, sometimes it'll, it'll uh, be, a, be a light snow and then turn to ice. Sometimes you'll just get um, blasted. 
Uh, also, the, the timing of the snow, the timing of the treatment matters too. Um, once the temperature drops below 15 degrees, salt becomes ineffective, so you definitely want to get salt on as quick as possible um, so that it's, it's, it's activated and is working and creating the brine that you need. Um, and then obviously equipment and personnel. Uh, we do have an aging fleet and sometimes uh, just uh, plowing snow is hard on the equipment and, and we have a, a limit, limited personnel. Uh, I believe, you know, it was 20 years ago, we had over 150 employees working on snow operations. We're down to 100 employees. We also, I believe, had 497 miles of uh, centerline miles of streets, and now we're over 630 miles. So, but we continue to do more with less. We try to operate as efficiently as we can uh, so that we can provide the, the highest level of service we can. However, as, as I mentioned, the, the level of service varies depending upon the event. Obviously, it's a lot easier to get the roads cleaned with the uh, smaller events or, uh, or or higher temperatures, uh, and then uh, obviously Mother Nature helps too. Uh, when the sun comes out the next day and the temperatures are rising, uh, but we do we'll do the best that we can, and uh, we are trying to make it more objective based and follow the APWA best uh, management practices while plowing snow. I always have an image of uh, one of the complaints we get a lot of times is uh, driveways being uh, plowed back in. So whenever you're uh, shoveling your driveway, if you can shovel past where the plow is going to plow and, and toss your pile there, that's good. And then making a pocket um, when they're coming up towards your, uh, your driveway will help limit the amount you have to shovel back out. Uh, and also there's a link on this uh, page to, to our uh, snow and ice removal plan on the City of Springfield's website. That's all I have. Any questions? So, any questions? Yeah. I'm uh, Alderman Hanauer. Okay, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Nate, I, I just, on the slide, I noticed that that's kind of an old map. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot on the, the, the slide with the map that had the different districts. Uh, there are some uh, uh, Savannah Point and, you know, those areas out there that have expanded so much. Um, I don't know whether you may want to look at, um, Maybe changing, uh, I, I can't pull it up right now, but the, uh, yeah. there's two districts that, it cro that, there's a district that crosses a district. I don't know if you want to look at redoing re that, but there are some fairly large neighborhoods out there and P Panth Creek West is inc has increased in size, uh, you know, so yeah. just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, and we do have an interactive map actually, uh, Alderman. And we do have all of those routes on our on our uh, plow list, and those actually receive a higher priority when we do the rate, just because they are new routes. We want to make sure that they are addressed, and we, we don't miss them um, uh, as we start out. But they are on our maps, and we will have an interactive map up on the website, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, that will have a little bit more features where people can turn off layers, see a specific district, see a specific area uh, that we're plowing, and the various types of classifications for our, the streets we have. Sure. Alderwoman DeCenso, then Alderwoman Conley, then Alderman Gregory. Thank you, Mayor, um, and thank you, Director Bottom. I just want to make sure, because I get a lot of complaints, and sometimes Southern View handles it, but South Spring and South College, which are actually on the um, south side of Southern View, are part of Ward 6, and they frequently get missed. So I just want to make sure they're taken care of. Thank you. Yeah, aren't those the uh, last blocks in Southern View, I think? Or they're they're oh. actually the city. They're, yeah, they're in the they're city, in, but they're, yeah, they're on the back side of it. That's correct. I they believe, are. I don't have the IGA. We have intergovernmental agreements, too, with uh, various jurisdictions. We have a maintenance agreement with Southern View, um, mm -hmm. with, with, with um, the various townships, Springfield Township, Woodside Township, uh, Clear Lake Township, Springfield and Woodside are two of our larger uh, intergovernmental agreements where uh, in order to efficiently plow the snow, we will plow some of their streets, they will plow some of ours uh, so that we can uh, plow them as efficiently as possible. But I will uh, make sure that that is taken care of and... Great. All Thank you. Con Alderman Conley. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Alderman, or, uh, sorry, Director Bottom, I, I just want to compliment you. Um, 
from what, I, what I'm hearing, you've had your employee headcount cut by a third and your workload increased by a fairly significant amount. Um, and I, I know that we're, we're, we're still waiting on our budget books and we're still moving into that, that season, but um, your department has the services that I get the most requests for consistently. And I think one of the biggest concerns people have is that there aren't enough people doing the jobs that they, they really want done. The streets being cleared, the sidewalks being safe and replaced. And, um, you know, I, since we haven't seen those budget books yet, I do hope um, those considerations will be brought into place. I mean, it's, it's a fairly significant reduction in, in headcount that you've taken. And, um, you know, as Alderman Hanauer pointed out, his ward is expanding with new areas. I'm getting a new subdivision that's going in in Ward 8 with Creston Place. And we don't want to exclude our older neighborhoods that also need to be fixed and, and addressed. So we just... Thank you for everyone for um, in your in your program in your office for for the work they've done. Um, I know they're out in all sorts of hours, trying to make things ready for people in the morning, and we certainly is well appreciated. They're doing a lot of work, but I hope to see maybe um, some head counts changes in there too. Very good, Alderman Gregory, and then Alderman Turner. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you, Mayor um, uh, Nate. I just had a quick question: the the have we had the need for snow contractors, and is that is that a similar process to our grass contractors in the um, spring time? I, I asked that because I, I had some guys asking that before, and it was my understanding we didn't have snow contractors. We have utilized snow contractors in the past. Um, However, the, the, we did not have to utilize them last, last year at all. We were able to do them with just with public works forces. If we, if we do engage in that, how, how, do we, how do we contact? Like, do we have a, 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 a list of those individuals? Do we, do we work with maybe our, our grass, grass folks? Or just we, curious. we have not done that in the past, just work with the grass folks, but um, Daryl and I can talk about that and okay. we'll take a look at what we've done with RFP. Yeah, probably sure. depends on the size of the truck. I have no idea what size truck you need for. Yeah, generally street. speaking, it's larger equipment uh, that, the, that the larger contract, the paving contractors um, okay. ha have uh, that we utilize in order to help out the operations. Okay. Uh, so. Unless there is alleys that, uh, you know, that they have entryways, you know, where their garages. So maybe that could be an area to utilize that. Appreciate you. Thank Auto you. Woman Turner. Um, actually, Alderwoman Distenso brought up an issue that I wanted to um, talk about as well. Forest Avenue, right off of starting with Clear Lake and, and going north, is is a problem area. I, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the fly dumping and, and um, stuff that was going on there. And that's one of those areas where we have an intergovernmental agreement with Springfield Township because it, it's kind of, you know, part of it, it starts and stops with the city and the township. And I get so many complaints from people on Forest Avenue um, saying that they're, they're getting absolutely no services from um, Springfield Township. So, and that kind of happened with the snow removal and the salting as, as well as the other things that I talked about. So what is our remedy for that? I mean, what, what can we do to, you know, kind of hold Springfield Township's feet to the fire? Because I, I just don't think it's, you know, to you guys' credit, um, as you always do, go above and beyond and go over, you know, and, and take care of it and, and clean it up and that. But I just don't think that that's our responsibility. And um, as Alderwoman Conley said, in these tough budget times, um, you know, I think that all governmental bodies should, you know, carry their fair weight in terms of, of uh, providing services for their constituency. So, so what is our remedy? Well, there are a couple different routes you could go. You can just amend the um, amend the agreement with them, the maintenance agreement with them, and uh, swap swap that location. 
uh, or not have necessarily a maintenance agreement uh, with them. But uh, I'll reach out to the uh, the township commissioner at this time to, to address that. Uh, however, now in regards to plowing streets, we only, this past these past uh, events, we only focused on the arterial streets and some of the, the major streets in and out of subdivisions and around the commercial district just due to the amount of snowfall we had as well as the pavement temperatures warming up and, and melting um, by, by the time we would even have got to, in essence, the residential streets, which I believe Forest Avenue would be a, a lower lower traveled street. Right, but I guess I was just kind of using that as an example as well because I, I get complaints, numerous complaints from people in that area, people in Springfield Township, as well as people who, who have city of Springfield addresses. So, um, you know, whatever our remedy is, I really uh, wish that you could kind of take a look at it. Because again, you guys do a lot of work over there that is not necessarily the city of Springfield's responsibility. Yeah, we'll probably uh, set up a meeting, talk to them about that. And uh, okay, that'd be, be part of that discussion. We can make that happen. That'd be great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Fulgenzi. Yes, uh, I called in a couple of uh, instances <laughs> where we have three limbs over blocking streets out in Devereaux and uh, in uh, uh, Indian Hills, and uh, you guys took care of those expeditiously. And uh, I think uh, it should be noted that we're gonna probably have a lot of limbs to pick up after this is all over. But uh, thank you for that. You're welcome. And, and that's correct. We are going to have a lot of limbs. And we have actually just started the uh, Christmas tree pickup uh, this past Monday. And since the uh, limbs fell basically the same weekend, we are. it'll take us longer to pick up the Christmas trees because we're trying to work efficiently and pick up the branches as we're picking up the Christmas trees now. So please have okay, patience. Thank you. Thank you. So any other comments or questions for Nate? Thank you, Thank Director Brado. Next is a uh, follow-up to uh, last Tuesday's discussion. I did ask Tom Lee with JCT Development to come up and give us a update on the Booth Ferguson project. So if uh, you'd unmute and give us an update, that'd be great. And then if there's any questions, uh, we can go over that. Sure. Thank you, Mayor and uh, all the people for the opportunity to speak to you guys again. I do have a colleague on the uh, on the Zoom meeting also, Andy Golubitsky. He's our uh, development director uh, throughout the country and uh, thought if you had specific questions about finance in which he's handling more intimately than I am, uh, I'd have him available. So by way of update, we remain super interested in the project. Uh, we are working diligently. We, we've hired a uh, Steckel Architecture, a local firm to help get the plans tightened up. We've been negotiating with uh, O'Shea Builders, also a, a local entity to assist us when it comes time to build it. I have uh, written agreements uh, out to every one of the various uh, union uh, attorneys for the amounts we've discussed as we've agreed to pay any outstanding union dues and benefits, as well as any direct costs that the union incurred in the collection of these debts. All of those have been submitted and um, negotiated. Uh, we're just waiting to, uh, to get the financing. And I guess that's the question that you guys want to hear most about. We have struggled a bit uh, through COVID um, to, to get lenders uh, interested in it. Not, very little to do with the project, although, as you know, it's a secondary market. And the project you know, needs some help from the historical tax credits and the like. But we are working and have a letter of interest from L LISC. I think uh, many of the members here might be familiar with that organization. Uh, we had a conference call today, full well knowing we were going to have this call tonight. Uh, Jessica we uh, Wetzel, who uh, I think worked at, at one point for the, for the city, uh, is uh, working for that agency now. And uh, based on our conversation today, we have to provide some additional documentation she requested, which we plan to add to her today or tomorrow. She told us she'll get us on their uh, loan committee by the end uh, in about a week to 10 days. And I hope to have a long commitment by the end of the month and uh, ready to schedule a closing date. She understands the issue with the union. And, uh, you know, she did indicate that it's sort of uh, the way we're doing the, uh, the TIF is a little bit abnormal, which, you know, makes it a little bit more complex in terms of financing from their side and everyone else's. But, you know, she was confident after our call today we could get through that. And uh, she indicated that because of this special requirement to pay the union, 
that uh, when we did have our commitment, there would be a clause in there indicating that any monies owed to the unions would be held in escrow and paid to the appropriate entities. So with that, that's my sort of general update and ready for specific questions. Any uh, questions or comments? Alderman Redpath and Alderman Hanar. You'll have to unmute Alderman Redpath. So uh, can you hear me now, Mayor? Yes, yep, thank you. So Mr. Lee, thank you for coming on the call tonight. It uh, does help us out knowing that you're aggressively working to get your financing to get this project off the ground. It's very important for downtown Springfield and the economics of Springfield in general. But um, we were concerned because we thought the agreement read that uh, 30, 90 days after the signature from the mayor that those benefits would be paid. So could you, maybe you or maybe uh, Corporation Council explain that, uh, where we are with that, Mayor? Can we yep. Yeah, Corporate hey, Council can explain that. Just, just very briefly, the agreement reflects what the discussion was at the time that the developer had agreed to, which was uh, basically imposing a 90-day contingency period or due diligence period for him to get financing and make payment. That's what's reflected in the agreement, is 90 days following the effective date of the ordinance. Uh, I did go back after the meeting last week because I just couldn't remember the timing of everything. And my calculation, which is what I've advised the uh, uh, developer is, that's at the end of this month, that 90-day period. I think it's, I believe it's, uh, I don't have it right in front of me. I think it's Sunday, December 31st, or I'm sorry, January 31st. And then uh, next business day is the 2nd. So uh, they have an obligation. We've talked about that. We had a difficult time actually getting the information together last week when it was Tuesday and then Wednesday, Thursday, we were working on ordinances and then trying to talk to people during the holiday. But uh, he was very uh, helpful and understands the timing of being able to get, uh, basically they have to get their financing before they can do anything. So it well, is my understanding, I'm sorry, it was my understanding from what he said today, earlier this afternoon, they think they will have their financing commitment within a week or two, and then they'll set a firm closing date. We've asked them to advise us of the closing date as soon as they know that. Okay, I I, I, uh, I did hear what he said about uh, they're close to getting their financing. That's uh, very important to all of us, I guess. And uh, you know, that's probably gonna fall right in line with the, the 90 day uh, grace period that we put out there for them. So Mr. Lee, I appreciate you coming on and, and talking to us today because this is a, a big deal for the city of Springfield. Downtown Springfield needs it. It's a lifeblood for us. And uh, obviously uh, uh, we're, we wanna support this project and we're glad that you were uh, able to come on tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Hanauer, then Alderwoman Conley. Thank you. I, I just wanted to point out that when I did look at the, uh, and thank you, thank you uh, Corporation Council for, for getting us that uh, developer's agreement, but one of the things that was a little confusing was there was nowhere on there uh, when, the, when it was signed. There was no date or anything. So um, just wanted to point that out. The other thing was, and, and maybe I, I don't know, maybe it was just me, but I thought that the financing and everything was already in place when we pass the ordinance, but uh, that uh, maybe I misunderstood. But I just wanted to tell you that in the future, we got to make sure we have dates on these documents uh, when they're signed so that we know um, if we have a time, you know, some type of a time crunch, uh, what, yeah, the, when the, the clock starts ticking. I was going to so. say that the time crunch, and again, this is maybe uh, uh, I'm sorry, I should leave my mask up, shouldn't I? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's important to uh, it's it, it's important to understand that the uh, time frame doesn't run from the date of the document. In other words, the this issue that we're uh, uh, struggling with is the city. In in some ways, the risk is on the developer. The, the agreements the city signs on these things are contingent financing agreements. That means they're expected to sign the agreement and do all of the contingencies, just, just briefly. So if they don't do it, they don't get the money. And so the obligation is always on the developer to make sure all of everything is uh, uh, concluded 
And from our perspective, it's not a construction contract, it's a contingent finance agreement. So I don't know if that uh, helps, but the 90-day issue was discussed, I think, at the, uh, I believe, at the council meeting, and I believe the developer agreed to that. In other words, I think there was a complete discussion of it at the time. So the, uh, the, the, the document, quote, unquote, the development agreement is just one of the closing documents. They have to sign it in order to be eligible to get any money. And the date they sign it is not the critical issue. The date is the 90-day issue, which is at the end of this month because of the timing with the ordinance. Well, and that's where the confusion was, Jim, yeah. because we, there was, I think a lot of us thought that it, the 90 days happened from the time the mayor signed the ordinance, not um, the, the developer's agreement. And that's where yeah. we were. There no, was, no, and, there was and, and uh, again, to try to help that, it runs, it, uh, I think Alderman, uh, I, I believe the discussion at the meeting was on that very point. The intent, the clear, uh, I'm sorry, the clear direction was that it was 90 days from the time the ordinance would become effective. And that's been the discussion all along with um, both Mr. Sullivan and then also uh, Mr. Lee. That's not a surprise. I think the problem they're running yeah. into is just the whole COVID situation. There, it's just that the, I think there's a lot of reluctance. I'm familiar with two or three projects here locally have nothing to do with the city, private projects, where the banks are saying they want to approve them, but they're not going to do anything until all the restrictions are lifted. Yeah, with regards to the uh, financing, uh, the main piece had to be put together the uh, uh, tax credits. Those are the ones that take the longest. Alderwoman Conley? Thank you, Mayor. Um, and Mr. Lee, thank you again for agreeing to show up tonight. Um, we certainly did have some questions and concerns last week, and I appreciate you taking the time. Um, I, I will point out, and I think if I could just maybe clarify some of the issues, um, first of all, that Alderman Hanauer expressed, the redevelopment agreement, which was what we specifically asked for last Tuesday that we received um, this afternoon, um, states this agreement entered into or on or as of the undes un undescribed date of November 2020. So I would like to know what day in November this redevelopment agreement was signed because it does have, clearly there was something that's supposed to be filled in in there. Um, and, I, and I believe, and I, I understand, obviously, that's when that 90 day clock starts, but I, and I'm fine with that. And Mr. Leah, it certainly is encouraging to hear that you've um, you've done an assessment of the fees that are owed or the out, the outstanding um, salaries and benefits that are owed. And I I appreciate your diligence in that. Um, I'd like to point out though, in the agreement, in section three of this agreement, there are two 90-day clocks that are triggered. So the first 90-day clock is the 90 days dealing with the financing necessary for completion of the project. Um, and that is understandably um, a, a section of the agreement that is, is causing co some complications and I, I can understand COVID having uh, an influence on that. But the second part of this, and it's a completely separate subsection, it's subsection I, is not within 90 days of the effective date of this ordinance, redeveloper agrees to satisfy all outstanding union benefits owed and provide final waivers and or agreements for repayments. So. I think we're mixing two different clock, two different identical 90 day clocks that deal with two very different issues. The financing, and this was the, this was the conversation, and please any, any other alderman can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding when we had this conversation in city council was that those were two very specific clocks, that the financing agreement was not something that we would hinge repayment of union benefits, those were two separate issues. So um, I'm certainly encouraged to hear that you've you've taken those steps to get started on the benefits issue, but I, I want to be clear, and I, I believe this redevelopment agreement makes it clear that 90 days for the financing and 90 days for the repayment of the debts that were owed are two different two different topics and should not be tied together or, or hinged as one single issue. Yeah, so, um, and Mr. That. Lee, obviously, you know, um, this is an important agreement. Um, the city has committed to uh, reimbursing upwards of $3 million for this project, which I think highlights the value of this to downtown Springfield, to the city of Springfield. And I'm um, 
while I was not one of the people who voted for this agreement, um, I would love to be proved wrong. And I said that at the time, I would I will be the first one to stand in line and, and applaud and apologize if this if this goes through and goes through well. I, I certainly hope it does. But while we're dealing with these this issue, we need to remember that the financing for two, for the project and the repayment of debts that were owed are two two different issues. Yeah, with regards to that, um, I've always contended with regards to 90 days, that's tied to the ordinance. And I think we discussed it uh, last week, Corporation Council confirmed it. That date is uh, February 2nd when that comes due uh, with regards to that. With regards to the whether to pay the unions or the uh, financing or prior to the financing, nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to do that. That's not Mayor, even, Mayor, hold I on, apologize. let me finish. Um, no, no, let me finish because I'm sorry. This is I exactly have the, the point I just made. I have the we, gavel. We very specifically let, in this redevelopment let me finish agreement. The statement. You don't have to get offensive. I, I'm not getting I'm trying offensive. To, I'm a former banker and I'm going to explain this once okay, and for well, all. I've contended this from when Rick Lawrence owned the project and then he tried to get it to another financier. Nobody is going to accept the debt of the project and pay past bills. This is highly unusual. And I'll let Tom Lee explain it to everybody. But just put your own self in this position. Would you take on the debt of a project or would you just let it hit the wall and then move from there? And so they, uh, like he stated, this is highly unusual. Uh, Lisk, the, uh, uh, the financier, even spoke to that. When you're talking about the TIF financing, a lot of that is generated off the project completion. But with regards to paying the unions, paying the contractors, that's the main goal. And when they came in, that was the caveat that this administration held to. We asked them, you need to, in order to come and ask for TIF, that's part of the requirement. We want you to work with it, pay those bills, because those dollars recycle in our community. And then you have an outside development that's bringing in outside resources in a uh, time of a pandemic to invest in our community. So when you hear developers saying it's hard to invest in Springfield or do business in Springfield, what we're discussing tonight is a perfect uh, reasoning for that. Because here's an individual, a developer from the outside coming in, they own two major buildings downtown. They are trying to make good on past due bills that were not their responsibility. That's highly unheard of. I'd like to know anybody that knows of a project that someone came in after the fact, not owing anything, not being involved with the project that would accept the debt and pay it to the unions, to the contractors and make them whole. That's highly unusual. And so we appreciate this uh, developer doing that. And so that's the intent, the 90 days, like they said, that's when the financing will come in and that's when we should decide. They'll make the payments. They don't get any TIF funds until they do. That's the other caveat. We said, you do not get any TIF funds. As Tom Lee explained again, Liz found that unusual that they don't get paid until the back end. That's because everybody will be paid on the front end and the project gets completed because nobody wants the vacant building downtown like everybody's said here. And so if you want a successful project downtown, we have to work with the developer while they're carrying the heavy load of past due debt owed on this project that was not their responsibility and making good the unions and making good the contractors. Alderman McMinimum? No, I'm sorry, Mayor, I, I wasn't quite done. I, I'm not trying to be offensive here. Alderman McMenamin, I'm okay, sorry, we'll, I wasn't finished. We'll yield finished. the floor to Alderman Conley. Mayor, I'm the meeting, Alderman, Alderman Conley. May I finish and my so, point, Alderman McMenamin? Uh, thank you. I just want to, okay. Mayor, you call the shots, but you got interrupted already, Mayor. Now I'm getting interrupted. Go ahead, all the woman currently, and then all the men minimum. And then if uh, Tom Lee would like to weigh in on the entire discussion. Okay, I wasn't, I, and I, Alderman McMenamin, I was not trying to interrupt you. I was trying to respond to the mayor who was responding to me. I, I think that's kind of the give and take that goes with a legislative body and our, our open meeting. Um, mayor, my point that I was trying to make is that we have two separate entries in this redevelopers agreement. And the point 
the getting these unions paid is not contingent on the financing. They're both 90 day clocks. They both run. They both begin at the same time and they both end at the same time. And, and obviously, if, if if there's an issue with financing and that can't happen, I mean, that would be a that would be devastating. And obviously, I'm not expected to pay these fees at, at that point. But I, I just I was trying to clarify some points here. Um, and I, I think, you know, I'm sorry that me having questions and and cons and clarification around a development that it does include an over a three million dollar investment from the city. I'm sorry if that sounds you know questioning or or harsh. We have a duty to our constituents to make sure that we ask these questions. Um, we have another ordinance tonight on first reading that's dealing with a other TIF agreements where we're moving money from other funds. We have we have responsibilities here, and I certainly don't mean to question anyone. I was just pointing out the the points in this agreement. And Mr. Lee, I applaud and appreciate you very much. Yeah, your Corporation Council will uh, engagement go over in our community. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, corporate, hold on a second. Corporation Council will go over the TIF. Just remember, I think there's about a million dollars of actual TIP dollars being pledged. The majority of the funds, the three million that you're referring to, is generated from the project. So it's just not gonna help this project. This is gonna spur development along all of downtown. So it's not uh, questions that we're, uh, I'm not concerned about questions at all. I'm concerned about unrealistic expectations. And when people think that someone's going to pay the bill, that's like you're paying my credit card bill. You're not going to do it. I mean, that's what this is like. So uh, I'll ask Corporation Council to go over the TIF, how that's laid out. Mm -hmm. Tom Lee can respond, or Alderman McMinimum, and then Tom Lee can respond to all of that. I'm sorry, oh. Mayor, you just told me that I'm being unreasonable. No, I'm I said unreasonable discussing expectations. the agreement that we've already made. So mm -hmm. I don't think, no. consider that to be unreasonable. Could, maybe maybe this will help a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, what on, what uh, Alderwoman Connolly is saying is exactly correct. There are two clocks. They both are run simultaneous. I think what the mayor is trying to bring up and what uh, Mr. Lee has said, uh, uh, I think, earlier and last week and today and yesterday was that if they can't get financing, they can't make the payments. So... There are absolutely two requirements, two clocks, two 90-day times at the same time. No question about it. And so what I think, uh, and again, uh, Mr. Lee can address this, of course, but I think they're trying to pin down the overall project financing before they would make a payment and not be able to do the project. And I think that's what the mayor was trying to address. Uh, and we just don't know the exact timing because everything is so close, Mr. Lee indicated today that there would, he thought there would be a financing commitment letter. That's a binding letter from a financing company to provide the money for the whole project. And from that, he would get a closing date. So the next step from the city's point of view, it would seem to me, would be to let him provide the financing commitment, which is required under the agreement, you know, the contingency period, and provide a closing date. Then we'll know how to deal with these timing issues, but there are definitely two separate uh, requirements. There's no, uh, I, I don't think there's any uh, dispute or question about that, if that uh, helps, Mayor. I uh, didn't answer my question about laying out the proceeds of the TIF. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, what the mayor indicated is correct. You may recall that this was discussed, I think, very significantly in front of the uh, Economic Development Commission. I think there's numerous, uh, I was going back through all the emails after last week trying to remember, very honestly, we've been so uh, busy with all of these different things. And all of this was discussed about the timing and the agreement provides that because of what happened on the first project, where we got right in the middle of it, there had been bank funds, almost four million of bank funds uh, set forward and about a million dollars of TIF reimbursements that had gone forward. And so, the decision was made this time by the mayor, by others, that this would be on the back end. In other words, there would only be money when the project was finished. So there would never be an exposure of the city to put more TIF money in and no project. So that's the reason that it was done uh, in this instance. And a similar formula, you may recall, was actually uh, done with the new YMCA, 
where only the initial payment up front was for the out-of-pocket cost with the acquisition of the site. Now, after they're done, now the TIF reimbursements are following on. So trying to have the TIF tied to you have to have a finished product protects the city from another repeat of what happened earlier. And that's what Mr. Lee is, I think, referring to, that the LISC people or some of the finance people are saying they find that unusual uh, uh, where, this, where the city's funds are coming at the end only after the project is complete and a, a certificate of occupancy is, uh, is issued. Alderman McMinimum. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Lee, thank you for being here today. Uh, this is an exciting project. It's all plus. Um, the, I don't know the exact numbers. I think you're going to spend seven to ten million dollars, and after you spend all that money and the project is completed, then the city pays you uh, the first dollar. So there's no risk on the city. Uh, I was really excited to hear you talk about Jesse Weitzel being involved in this, a former employee of the city, and um, Karen Davis was our economic development director. She was with the LISC when she left our city position. Now, she, and then she went to LISC. Now she's with the state of Illinois. Um, uh, Housing Development Authority, a very top-level position. Uh, I think you're, you're getting together with some good people there um, at LISC, and um, we've got everything to look forward to. The downtown interests are all in favor of this project. They're excited about it. If you come in and, and get this done, you pay off the unions, you pay off the subcontractors, you get work done downtown, you turn three dinosaur buildings into useful buildings. This is all positive. Let's not argue over crumbs. Let's not set up trip wires for what's basically a good deed that can uh, take place here. So let's all hang together on this and um, look for success and not look for failure. Um, Come on now, we're going into possibly some depression, I mean, uh, economic turmoil down the road with our national situation. Um, who knows how this virus is gonna all end up. Um, and I distinctly remember, distinctly remember when we passed this on a six to four vote that financing was discussed. And we did hear that financing is not yet available. They were gonna work on it. And uh, the developer said, Mr. Lee, I think you said, you know, you know you're not excited about that 90 day limit that was put in there, but you'll work with it the best you can. And uh, you're still working with it. And uh, please hang in there with us. And um, we need outside developers into Springfield. And we want to be friendly. We want to be known as a city that can work with developers, because that's what all the aldermen say. And now we got to prove it. And so um, let's let's get together on this. Um, so um, and um, that's all I got to say, Mr. Mayor. Thanks a lot. Tom Lee, would you uh, like to weigh in then Alderman Gregory and Alderman Donlin? Yeah, what I'd first like to say is I appreciate all of the comments and, and you know, Alderman Connolly, I, I understand your questions and I respect your questions and I appreciate your reasons to ask those questions. I, I will say the manner in which this has been drafted, I fully understand why we came into a situation where someone else had, had made, uh, you know, mistakes that had, you know, caused issues with the union, with the, with the city, and we came in to, to try to correct that, and our goal is to correct it. We've assumed a debt that's not ours. Uh, we'll work and diligently get that done. We, we spent a lot of money to date already internally, you know, doing our pro formas, uh, working with, you know, we, we have payments going out to architects. Uh, we're committed to this project. Uh, understand the way in which it was drafted is not typical. The fact that we have to wait till we finish, I understand why that's there. I didn't object to that. I did object or at least push back because during the last hearing when it was approved, I did say, hey, 90 days, epidemic, pandemic. But all that being said, we've pushed through the best we can. We've gotten local folks involved. Uh, based on my conversation today, I'm confident we're going to have a, a full loan commitment, which is a binding commitment to lend money in the next you know, two weeks, 10 days. Uh, I, I've made my phone number and email available to all all aldermen and all the women. And to the extent anyone has any questions offline or concerns, uh, the offer I made at the original hearing stands. Call me anytime, email me anytime. I think the mayor and Mr. Zirkel will attest to the fact I've never not returned a phone call the same day and never not responded to an email the same day. And I assure everyone on this uh, council that communication will never be the issue. Uh, and I, I really do look forward to uh, to bring a successful project home for the city of Springfield and for us. Alderman Gregory. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Zirko, I just had a quick question. So do we, on, on, on projects that, that, that are, are receiving some type of city incentive, uh, whether it's TIF or whatever, do we always put these 90-day um, marks on, on the, the ordinance or is this a special case? And also my second question would be, um, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I lost. I lost my train of thought. Go ahead, and answer. Um, on the on, on a project like this, that is a, a, a would be considered, I think, a particularly short period of time because of the complexity. Any time, <clears throat> excuse me, any time that you have tax credits involved, it automatically becomes more complicated. Ask Joe Hurwitz at with the why. But you're trying to get the tax credits deal put together took way longer than they thought. Um, the issue with uh, some of the various ones, depending on the, uh, the for example, uh, the discussion about the legacy point uh, uh, process, they've asked for basically a year. So it's a short time. However, in fairness, that 90-day discussion did take place at the time. So there's no misunderstanding about it. And my impression is they're trying to get their financing commitment, which is a legal commitment for the project. And it's not just for the payment of the, to help you understand, it's not just for the payment of the uh, uh, contractors or uh, claimants, the union claimants, but it's for the entire project. So they, I think, are just approaching it, as the mayor mentioned, as I think Mr. Lee mentioned earlier, that they have to have to be sure they can do the project before they can make the other payments, because why would they make the other payments if they're not going to do the project? So I think they're struggling with trying to get that nailed down. And again, what Mr. Lee had told uh, the mayor uh, and myself actually earlier today, what he said today was they thought they would have the financing commitment for the whole project, not just for the, the subcontractors or the uh, uh, union claims, uh, but for the entire project within a week or two. So. Uh, I think we have to wait and see if we get, you know, if that commitment comes forward and he gets a firm closing date, because that'll give us the information uh, that's uh, most critical, because they're certainly not going to proceed with it if they can't get financing. And right. all of the agreements are contingent financing agreements, meaning they have to be able to, you know, they have to be able to borrow the money to do the project or it doesn't go forward. Well, I, I, you know, and, and I thank you for that explanation. That, um, I definitely understand. I think what what our city is going through, and some of our aldermen um, and women um, see, is sometimes we have these projects, we get our community built up, and then um, I think we've seen it with the hotel recently. We had conversations about pulling that money back into the TIF and things. Um, you know, we're seeing some of these projects, you know, we're getting our community hyped up about it, and then it's not coming through. So I think that's some of the concern. So um, with, with me, our alderman, and I appreciate your explanation. Thank you. Alderman Dallin, and then Alderwoman Turner. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, everyone. Mr. Lee, I want to uh, thank you and your colleague for being on this call this evening. You know, all that, uh, just to make it very clear, all that was discussed last week was, you know, it seems like it had been a while. Uh, I don't remember which alderman, whether it was Alderman Hanauer or Conley, uh, just asked for an update, so they remembered that there was some 90-day uh, contingency put in. And it seems like, uh, especially in the era of COVID, it seems like this 90 days has been a long, long, long time. So, you know, we just needed an update on, you know, where we were with the timing. Uh, when the, and, and, and I'm kind of a little bit perplexed tonight, and this is uh, really to the council itself, why we're, why we're uh, arguing about or discussing some of the terms that are already been decided. You know, there were six votes, it passed. Uh, the developer agreed to the 90 days. We agreed to the 90 days as a, as a city. And uh, that's why we ask uh, where we're on it. I appreciate the update. Uh, to clarify, just just so everybody remembers that uh, this this reference to the uh, no TIF money being distributed until the project is complete, that's something that's not unique to this project. It was something this council passed well before this developer came forward and made a policy because we didn't want to get stuck uh, with the TIF project like we had been in the past that was not complete, uh, an empty building. A lot of money had been spent, uh, over a million dollars or right around a million dollars, no, excuse me, over a million dollars of city funds, and we don't have anything to show for it. So uh, I, I hope uh, when this money is distributed that we have something wonderful to show for it that is uh, something great for downtown. 
And uh, but I do appreciate the update this evening. Thank you. Alderman Turner. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Can you unmute, please? Thank you. Sorry. Um, Alderman Donlin said much of what I was going to say, but I, I, I would say that the fact that last week we said that we were not going to vote on any uh, TIF projects until we saw a developer's agreement will go a long way to, um, you know, not have us in this situation going forward. So having that developer's agreement prior to voting on um, or TIF ordinances, I think is a is a bold move that will serve us all very well. Very good. Any other questions or comments? Tom Lee, would you like to uh, say anything in closing? I, I appreciate the the uh, support from the city. Uh, I appreciate the concerns. Uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna do our best to get this deal done, and we're confident based on where we're at with the various discussions that it's going to happen. I'm available to anybody offline, email, text, smoke signal, I'll respond to it. I look forward to working with the city. Yeah, thank we, thank you. We really appreciate it, and we're looking forward to that completed project that will help uh, move downtown Springfield to that next level. Very exciting. Thank you. All right, I'm going to drop off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chair will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the December 15, 2020 City Council meeting and approve oh, the minutes. Second. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre council first reading of ordinances into the record of this City Council meeting. So moved. Second. second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading of the consent agenda into the record of this city council meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage. So moved. Second. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The clerk will call the roll. You'll have to unmute, please. Yep. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderman Turner. Yes. Alderman Frilginzi. Aye. Alderman Proctor. Yes. Alderman DeCenso. Yes. Alderman McMiniman. Yes. Alderman Connolly. Aye. Alderman Hanauer, Alderman Donlin, sorry. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten ayes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. Is there any action on the agenda items that are remain tabled or in committee? Very good. Next item on the agenda is 2020-509, an ordinance authorizing relocation expenses in the amount of $971,924.25 for the relocation of the personal property located on parcel SR0114, Salvation Army, relating to the Springfield Rail Improvement Project for the Office of Public Works, shall entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-509 on final passage. So moved. No. Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? Yes. Alderman Repath. Yes, I'd just like to thank uh, Alderman Bottom for uh, clarification on the relocation expenses. Uh, he sent that to me, and one of the major problems was there was there was like nine hundred thousand plus dollars uh, dedicated to this move. But it it does lay out that they we have to replace some of the equipment that goes with the Salvation Army. So uh, to you, uh, Director Bottom, thank you for that explanation, and I'll be I vote on this. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The clerk will call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Yes. Alderman Fulginzi. Yes. Alderman Proctor. Yes. Alderwoman DeCenso. No. Alderman McMiniman. Yes. 
Alderwoman Connolly. Aye. Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Nine ayes and one nay, Mayor. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is 2020-511, an ordinance appointing Grant Barksdale to the Deferred Compensation Committee. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-511 on final passage. So move. Second. Then moved and second, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The clerk will call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Yes. Alderman Frodinzi. Yes. Alderman Proctor. Yes. Alderwoman DeCenso. Yes. Alderman McMiniman. Yes. Alderwoman Connolly. Aye. Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten ayes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is 2020-515, an ordinance authorizing acceptance and execution of grant number 173-800-451 in the amount of $136,727 from the Illinois Department of Public Health for funding of the AmeriCorps III and authorizing a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $160,082 for the Office of Planning and Economic Development. The chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-515 on final passage. So moved. Second. Okay. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The clerk will call the roll. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Yes. Alderman Fulgenzi. Aye. Alderman Proctor. Yes. Alderwoman DeCenso. Yes. Alderman McMiniman. Yes. Alderwoman Connolly. Aye. Alderman Donlin. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Ten ayes and no nays, Mayor. Thank you. Is there any unfinished business come before the council? Alderman Gregory. I had one question that came in earlier on the discussion uh, uh, about CWLP. Are not-for-profits eligible for that? Like the Hoogland Center for the Arts, um, St. Martin's? Um, We're evaluating that. Uh, I did, Hoogland Center did call me, and I told them to go ahead and apply. Their usage rate was too high, so... That's something we're going to evaluate. Uh, the businesses, we wanted to give them the opportunity first. Absolutely. And there's been about 100. So we're going to uh, re-up our efforts to contact them again. And then uh, after next week, we will probably assess that situation. Okay. All right. Appreciate you. Thank you. Alderman Hanauer. Thank you, Mayor. I would ask that we uh, – I appreciate the fact that uh, you're looking into that because – as I'm sure Alderman Redpath has gotten hit, I, I know a lot of lake clubs that are that have just been devastated by this, and and two months of uh, of electricity would go a long way, and they're still in, they're still hurting. So uh, I would I would and I've got uh, KC. I don't know what their their records are, but they're you know they've been shut down too. Casey's Pub and that, and uh, so. Yeah, we'll uh, take a look at that. Any other unfinished business? Is there uh, one item? We did talk to Joe Herwitz uh, with regards to the YMCA, uh, and the final billing was received, I think it was December 30th, but there's uh, some items that had to be taken care of. But he did offer uh, two things that he pointed out. One is uh, at the old Y downtown, they were operating at 10% capacity, even though they were allowed up to 25% under the mitigation. And then you compare that to the west side, and they were operating at 25% capacity. When they made the move to the new YMCA downtown, uh, they start immediately. Actually, they have more than 25% uh, capacity. They've had to turn people away. So the popularity of that uh, facility is uh, immense, and they're very appreciative of the city's participation in that. And he did offer um, in about two weeks if anybody would like a tour of that to contact him, and he'd uh, give you a personalized tour of that facility if you haven't gone through the finished uh, product yet. And then the other thing, uh, I did uh, uh, talk to Portillo's, and I just asked him uh, how does Springfield rate uh, in comparison to other Portillo's throughout, throughout the state, 
and he says uh, the Springfield one's the number one downstate right now with uh, activity, uh, but it's new, you know, so I told them that when they were coming that uh, we'd probably be the number one in the market just because of how we uh, support the hospitality industry associated with that. That's only because you took your family there first, Marin. You got 45 <laughs> million people in your family, and they probably all ate. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so is there any uh, new business come before the council? I am going to have a uh, meeting with the legislator, local legislators, um, bringing up a couple items, the TIF, uh, as well as the uh, remote, uh, you know, the vote uh, with regards to remote legislation, CWLP, and the uh, pensions and the ramp, um, and that'll be more of an update for them uh, this week prior to the veto session, just to keep them informed of uh, what interests we have with regards to that. So I'll give you an update uh, after that discussion. Yeah, Alderman DeCenzo. Um, thank you, Mayor. What is your word of the year? Because I believe for the past two years, it's been optimism. <laughs> so I'm just curious as to what your, your theme or word of the year is this year. Well, thank you for putting me on the spot. It's optimism 3.0. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> it's a trifecta. I, I, I have an idea. I have an idea. Oh, how about how about unity? Oh, that'd be good. Because yeah. we have, uh, we've, we've been divided amongst ourselves. Um, we have been divided as a country. Um, so how, how about we make unity the word for this year and we can all come together and work together because we've got some heavy lifting and some very difficult work and decisions ahead of us. So I propose unity. That's good. Because we got a lot done uh, for, you know, if you're saying we're divided, uh, we got a lot done. And just think what we get done if we improved upon that. That'd be awesome. That, that's what I'm talking about. So any other uh, new business? Oh, with regards to that, uh, you'll be happy to know I talked to uh, Alderwoman Turner over the weekend, too. Uh, she knows this, but I asked um, uh, Tim Griffin, council coordinator, to meet every Monday set meeting to go over items of concern or any issues that uh, need to be communicated better or what have you. So hopefully that uh, helps. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to try, you know, as corporation councils <laughs> stressed with uh, undermanning, under uh, staffing uh, with regards to that. So uh, the agreements, I think that is a good idea to get clarification on the front end rather than the back end. I think that will all be helpful. So any other new business? Is there, I don't know if anybody signed up to speak, uh, Clerk Lesko? Uh, no one signed up, Mayor. Okay. Very good. Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Good evening. <laughs>